Hi, my name is Ram and welcome back to Uploading Files with Vue.js and Express series. In this episode, we'll implement multiple file uploads in one go. And to make things a little bit more interesting, we'll also create the file management for user and we'll see how to validate multiple files as well. Before we begin, just a quick note that if you don't want to wait for another episode to be published, you can go to the gsfullstack.com and purchase the series as pay what you want model as a way to support my work in this channel. Thanks. Okay, so in this particular case, we're going to create new component and render it in another column. So let's go back to app view here and let's add columns here. And inside of it, we'll have column. And here's where we'll have our simple upload. Now let's define another column and here we'll have the multiple upload. Multiple uploads component. So I'm just going to copy this line, call it multiple uploads. And of course I need to add it here in components as well. So now I need to create it multiple uploads dot view. And I will open the simple one and just going to copy and paste it in here. Okay, so let's go through it. What changes do we need to introduce for it to work? So first of all, here in the input field, we need to specify that we allow multiple files to be selected. So we'll add multiple. Easy as that. So now let's rename ref here from file to files just to keep the semantic sense. And also we're going to, so going back here. Yeah, we're going to delete this files file name because we're going to create the file management system. So we're just going to delete this line altogether. So going down to the script, let's re rename it to multiple uploads. Let's change file to files and let's set it to empty array by default. And for methods, let's just start from scratch and we just go and delete everything from them. Okay, so now we're ready. Again, so first things first, user selects some file, but what I want to achieve is when user selects some file, we add them to the collection of files that we want to upload, not rewriting them. So let's define files. Uh, That's gonna be this, refs, files, dot files. And now, we set files to the files that is already there and we add files that user just selected in the field. Okay, so now I want to display these files to the user. Above the send button, we'll have another field and here we'll have the level. Level is the styling that allows us to have this nice lines with the left part and right part. And we're going to have in the left part, we'll have the file name and in the right part, we'll have the delete uh, icon. So here's this level and we're going to iterate through files. So we use v4, file and index. We'll use index to be able to delete files from this collection in files. Of course, we need to specify key and we'll just use the index for it. Okay, so inside of it, we'll have the level left. And here is where level item have level item. And inside of it, we'll have file, file.name. And on the right, level right, we'll have another level item, which is anchor tag with class delete. So now if we go to the browser, we have an error, multiple uploads, can't resolve. I need to rename file, I messed it up. Multiple, multiple uploads. Let's try it again. Okay, so now we have another file upload. Let's also make it the different color. So not primary, let's do the warning. Okay, so now when user selects several files here, we see them right here and you can see we have the delete buttons on the right here. Nice. So now we, when user clicks on this button, we want to delete the file from the collection. So for that, let's go back to this A class delete and on click prevent and let's say files splice by index, just one element. So this basically will delete 
uh, item from the collection. So if we go back and we try to delete one, it goes away. Nice. Of course, we need to validate. Now that we display the list of files to the user, it's, it just makes sense to notify which files are not allowed to be uploaded. So let's do this. So for that, in the select file, we're going to map through all files and mark them as valid or invalid, and as well as include clarifying message of some way. So for that, we're going to map through all the files. So the problem is that files that we have right now is actually the files list, the JavaScript files list, and it doesn't have map function. So we're going to use Lodash for it. So we'll import Lodash. And now with Lodash, we can just have these files. I'm going to um, comment this one. And I take all these files and then I map through all the files. So I have the file and I have my own object. So I want to have name, so file.name. I want to have, for example, size, file.size. File and I want to have, for example, type. And then also I want to have a flag. So is, it, is this file valid or not? So for that, I will just have invalid message that equals to this validate. And I pass down file to it. So this validate will return empty string if everything is okay or the error message if something is wrong. Again, very simplified stuff. You can just iterate on it and create a better code or a better user experience. Okay, so now let's define this validate function. It takes file. And here we just validate. At the end, we return empty string in if everything's okay. But let's define max size as we did before, say 200. And also we're going to define allowed types. So let's go to simple upload and I'll just copy this from there. And now we just check if file.size more than max size, we have an error. So we return max size is max size divided by 1000. And if it's not in allowed types, includes, includes uh, file.type, then we have another error message, not an image. So these are messages that we are going to render alongside the file name to tell the user that something is wrong. So now we have absolutely new collection of objects. So let's go back here to our list. And we have index, we have class. So we're going to change class because if it's wrong, we want to have it in different color, something like red. Yeah. So we're going to define it as a class and we add JavaScript here. So first of all, there's going to be level, but if file has the invalid message, then we add has text danger class to it. So that will make it red. And also here where we have the file name, we'll add another span. So we'll have span, which will render only if file invalid message is there. So in this case, we'll add nbsp, non-breakable space, dash, and then have this file invalid message render alongside it. Okay, so that should do it. So let's review what we've done. So on select file, we just take all the files that are there. And first we have just an empty array. And then we map through these files that user selected and create our own object. So in the end, we'll have array of our simple JavaScript objects. And one of the key things here is we have the file name and we have invalid message. And if this message has something in it, it's not an empty string, then we have the text danger red color and also we render it right here so let's have a look i have uh, an expect token expected comma so i deleted comma somewhere oh yeah after validate of course okay so now let's choose some files let's choose invoice and several images hit open and you can see that they are all 
not allowed. So not an image and max size, max size. And you can, you know, expand on this as much as you want. You could have several things here. You can display what size is and what is allowed, etc. So build your own UI for it. And you can delete it and that works beautifully. But there is a problem. As I told you before in the review that we create our own objects. That's not the file object that we need to upload. So we need to introduce another thing where we'll store actual files. So let's uncomment this line here and let's rename it to upload files. So this way we have two things. We have upload files, which are JavaScript files object, and we have this collection that we use just for rendering a list of items and just a way to um, manage them. But we need to handle it as well. So first of all, let's add it here, upload, upload files. And when we delete one, we also need to add splice to it as well. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it here and just change files to upload files. And you can see that's not really good, so maybe we should actually extract it into the method. You will do it by yourself, right? Okay, so now when user clicks on the send, we send this upload file stuff, but before we send in this collection of upload files, we want to make sure that it actually valid file. So if user, for example, in the browser goes here, he sees that, yeah, it's invalid, but he still sends it. Like in this particular case, we do not want to send these red files. So we need to run validation again right before we send it. So let's do this. So here in send file. So first of all, we define form data as well. Form data equals new form data. And then we'll append only files that are valid. And again, we do not have a map on file collection, so we're gonna use Lodash as well. So we'll have 4H to iterate through the upload files. Another way to do that is just to use for loop, but I prefer to use um, more functional approach to this looping stuff. So this upload files, and we take file, and then we check if this validate file equals to empty string, then we form data append files and this file. So what's going on here, we iterate through all uploaded files that user selected, then we check, and if it's valid, then we append it to the form data. After that, we do almost the same thing that we did before. So we'll use the try block, and here we'll just await for access post request to, let's say, multiple. And we pass down form data. And just as a side note, is, again, if you need to, to send an other data alongside the files, you just can append any kind of values to it, strings, arrays, etc. So now when we have this, if everything's okay, we just have the message, file, files has been uploaded. This files equals to empty array and this uploaded files as well. So we reset everything to zero. If we have an error, we want to set message to error.response.data.error that we get from the server and this error set to true. So let's check it out in the browser first. I just want to make sure that I'm sending only the files that are allowed. So this validation works. So again, I'm going to just select everything and you can see that only one file is actually validated. So when I hit send, I am making the request and here in the headers at the bottom, you can see that only one narrow.png is sent. That's great. So now we need to implement this endpoint on the server. So let's go to the code. And basically it's almost exactly the same. So I'm just going to copy upload. I'm going to rename it to multiple. But instead of the single, right now I know that is the collection of files. So I will have the array that is called files. 
And again, this file stuff comes from this name here that we appended. And let's return files as request files. Let's have a look. Send in. And now we have in preview, we have files that is an array of uploaded files. And here is the one that has been uploaded. And the cool thing is all our server side validation still work. So if I remove this validation stuff, so I go back to view code here and I remove this validation. So simply by returning uh, empty string right of the bat. So all the files will be valid. So now if I go back and try it out, server should respond with error. Send it. Too large, max size is 200. But the problem with the approach is it doesn't upload valid files either. So even if one of the files is invalid, the whole bunch is rejected. So that's why client-side validation is actually very nice. And in this case, you know, makes user experience much, much better. And that's it. Now user can upload multiple files and we validate it and user can edit these files. That's, that's basically it. But we can do even better. In the next episode, we'll implement our own very popular drop zone as well as upload progress bar. Sounds good? See you in the next one. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and if you want to get notified every time when I upload new content, hit the bell icon as well. And if you want to support my work, you can become a patron on the Patreon, or just go to the gsfullstacker.com and purchase one of my series that I publish there. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you in the next one.